thalamus is this little structure in the center of your brain. It looks like two little bird eggs. And it's highly connected to the uh, to the neocortex. So there's all these connections that go back and forth. And also everything that enters the neocortex goes through the thalamus. Nobody has really any idea what the thalamus does. Um, there's, there's, there are general theories about things it does. One of the things that people have noticed is that information seems to go through the thalamus and before it gets to the cortex, but it doesn't seem to be changed much. Like one spike comes in and another spike comes out, that kind of thing. And so people called it a relay station or relay cells, in fact, they're called relay cells. But that really doesn't make any sense. Why do you need relay cells if they're not doing anything? So uh, it was sort of an unspoken thing, but really the thalamus is a complete mystery as to what it's doing in any kind of detail. Again, lots of detail known about the anatomy and the different cell types and how those cell types respond. But from a theory point of view, very little information about what's its role in processing, what's its role in learning. So um, one of the, uh, the outcomes of our work and our theory is we realize there is an essential component of, of thinking and, and learning and inference that has to be done and the thalamus seems ideally suited for it. And so we, in the paper, we, we propose a theory about what these relay cells are doing because they can't just be relaying information. That's not very useful. Um, and it has to do with um, orientation uh, transforms, that is taking sensory input, motor input, and rotating it to be consistent with previously learned models. So that's it, all detailed in the paper. Um, but um, so I think for the first time, we have a real uh, solid proposal, at least, for what those relay cells are doing and why they look like relay cells when they're actually they're not, they're really multiplexes and they're moving signals back and forth. So yeah, maybe to add just from a capability point of view, what uh, this allows you to do if the thalamus can do reference frame transformation on the input that comes directly from the sensors is that each column can learn a model of an object once and then recognize that object in novel orientations because it can simply take the sensory input that might come in in, in various orientations like this, this mug and rotate it to correctly match the model that it has internally learned. So it does a reference frame transformation from uh, locations of the object in the world to um, locations on the model that it has learned. In the paper, we go into great detail about these transformations. And one of the cool ones that we kind of worked on and discovered is how it is we learn um, the orientation of different objects to each other. But well, one of the things that important role the thalamus plays is that we learn compositional structure, things made of other things. We have to learn the relative positions and poses and orientations. And these things have to be calculated in real time. As we're looking at the world, as we're moving our heads, as we're moving the objects, as things are changing constantly, the brain has to constantly, constantly uh, compensate for these changes in orientation. And, and if things move, all the things with them are moving. So the thalamus plays this central role, not of just changing the orientation of the input, but sort of uh, uh, maintaining our ability to predict objects as all, as complete objects rotate and so on. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, we've detailed this in, in, in fairly detail in the paper about how this works.